Today, we're going in a slightly different direction, not at all chronological, the dark side of the moon. <laughs> I'm really excited to listen to this because I can't even count how many times it's been recommended, so we gotta do what we gotta do. Song number one is Speak To Me, and the vocal is instrumental. So we'll see what this is all about. Is it playing? Yeah, we're about 11 seconds in and no sound. All that's going on is this very low, subdued hum of a percussive element that sounds like a heartbeat, or it very well could be a recording of a heartbeat. That did really start feeling like the intro to some sort of haunted horror movie because after that heartbeat sound, every element was introduced one at a time and slowly and then it kind of built up, but it never got too bold. It never became obnoxious. It was just this mix of like this ticking clock and then a, like a like a tape loop and then the tape getting ripped. Laughter, kind of like <laughs> a Winnie the Pooh character laughing. And then, and then there was a voice, something about always being mad, I've always been mad. If that's any indication where this is going, it feels like we're getting sucked into this very eerie, chaotic, haunted world. Sliding right into song number two, we've got Breathe, parentheses, in the air, and our vocal is Gilmore. So right away, the very beginning moments of Breathe, in the air, it feels like we had our climactic moment from song number one, Speak to Me. <laughs> That riff just melted me. Oh my gosh, that was so good. Be afraid to care. That was amazing, oh my gosh. What a completely different sensation from Piper at the Gates of Dawn. This was insane, beautiful, beautiful. I love the slide in the guitars and the slide of the pitches and the sound and when the vocal came in. So, so sultry and so delicious, hanging on every word, that tone, the, oh my gosh, just such a, such a beautiful voice, really. And um, you could hear the overtones and the sustained notes, kind of like an echo or a shadow over everything of the organ. So they're bringing that back in. I did notice that similarity, but I loved all the flavor in the electricity, like in the, the electric guitars. It was just so, so good. <laughs> There's something so easy about the fluidity of the movement, but the actual timbre and the pitches have this heaviness and the way that they kind of counterpoint one another is what makes this song just so satisfying. I feel like I haven't lived until I've heard this song and I can't believe I've lived so long without listening to this. Incredible. <laughs> We have one line that's giving us a little more consistency and one that's kind of stretching it out and using a little bit more legato nature and the way that they're fusing with one another is creating magic. <laughs> Thank you. 
And the way that we just were dropped off in this V section was so insane. It feels like this, we're finally landing in like Wonka land, like in the chocolate factory, just this crazy new world. <laughs> And there we had these clusters of incredible chords. We had we had a seventh, and we had a taste of a ninth, and it just gave that spice, it gave that edge. <laughs> we're not going back to true A, we're going back to like A1, a different variation on A. <laughs> Here's where you can really hear that organ pulling through and really hitting these pitches that are building on the sound. That leads us into song number three on the run and our vocals are instrumental yet again. Okay, so the pairing of this like tape looped effect that's kind of anxiety inducing and it feels very circular the motion where it feels like maybe it could be speeding up or maybe it's just the illusion maybe it's just going over and over again but when it comes to that certain time in the circle it feels like it's being sped up i don't know i feel like i'm being played with but then pairing it with that synthesizer i'm very familiar with that now because of stranger things that's kind of sad to admit <laughs> completely flipped from being in a horror film to now we're in this very action-packed sci-fi film and or uh, an episode of Black Mirror right and this is like a tension building sequence scene like things are happening action is getting built up we're on our way to the climax our hearts are beating I heard a lot of different really cool elements in there so far. I've like heard like footsteps, which kind of feels like we're at like in this digital cyber forest. <laughs> During the most quiet moments, I feel the most stress. I'm reeled right back into terror in those very quiet moments and especially when that laughter kicks in. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm put back in that terrified spot. A crossover that I do notice between uh, The Dark Side of the Moon and The Piper at the Gates of Dawn so far is in the usage of non-musical elements and making them very musical and they're toying with illusion and they're playing with us. They're almost making their songs a magic act or this magic trick. They combine crescendos or when the music gets louder with pitches going up and up and up and escalating, kind of giving us this optical illusion, but I know optical is with the eye, but I guess they are trying to make us see this in our mind, but I guess also sonic illusion of something coming close to us and then bouncing back away with the increase in the pitch and the increase in the sound and then the decrescendo with the the lowering of the pitches. They're kind of playing with them together to create this like back and forth pulled feeling and I'm already kind of getting dizzy. <laughs> Sorry, I had to go change my shirt because it's really cold. I'm freezing. We're moving right along into numero cuatro, time. How suiting that numero cuatro is time. I've been so obsessed with time ever since I was really, really young and time travel and a time traveling machine or a device or something, some sort of vehicle to transport me back. And I'm really hoping that this song can be that today. Lead vocals are Wright and Gilmore. course for a song called time we have just an explosion of clocks it feels like every single clock got struck by the same lightning bolt everything went off at the same time <laughs>
Familiar. I believe this was the sound we had more so in breathe, right? So much beautiful movement, the way that they work up our emotions and they lead us to so many different peaks, but it's not even an ultimate peak. It's really hard to say what the ultimate peak in that song was. And then when the vocal is introduced, because you think, oh, they got this. They are instrumentalists. They are inventors. They're able to invent music out of non-musical elements. But then when they, they the way that they, they touch the guitar, every, every note that's released, every pitch. One of our first massive builds happens right at the tip top of the song right here. such a beautiful chaos. Something about it is actually really pleasant to me. Like, I can see how this could come off mysterious and haunting, a little bit eerie, a little bit perhaps um, sinister, but it just comes off really warm at the same time to me, very familiar. <laughs> There's something so special happening in the percussions. The drumming is excellent. It's on another level. But then there's another element incorporated within that adds to the drums and the way that those two communicate and work together to build on the percussive element of the sound is insane. And then atop there's this starlight twinkling sound that's so beautiful and peaceful and otherworldly. <laughs> There you can kind of hear in the percussion line that there is a drum that holds pitches and I guess that is the element that makes it a little bit confusing and really intriguing. The rhythm at which the vocal comes in and the way it sits, it feels like it doesn't feel like the introduction to the vocal. It feels so comfortable and natural already. It feels like because this happens at what? This happens at the 2 minute and 23rd second mark of the song. And it feels like it's been happening for a while. It's so, so easy. It's breezy and it's very, very danceable right away. And the way that it fuses with all the guitars going on. It, oh, so good. I love the tone and then I love the placement of the, the gravel in the sound, the, that, <clears throat> that rasp that's so, so delicate, but it makes the whole sound just very, very fierce and, and very hardcore and rough. And this part feels very spacey. It feels like we're going back into a more cosmic element. We're being suspended from gravity and that background vocal kind of adds to that, that, you know, defying gravity nature. And a beautiful harmony executed like that just allows me to fall in love completely and just breaks my heart at the same time. And the reason for it being so painful and heartbreaking it could be the placement of, of the seven. It just moves the melody right on top of it. The vocal line is insane. This whole song is bizarre. <laughs> It's just very easy, chill, and groovy. Oh, oh, and we're pulling back in that breathe moment. A completely contrasting vibe than what just happened before. We had this very rock and roll slash space experience with the, the A and B side that were already contrasting enough. Yeah, well, I We're gonna keep the party going right along into number five, The Great Gig in the Sky, and our lead vocal is Tori.
first note that the incorporation of the piano was going to be the end of me. <laughs> This feels like very operatic rock and roll. And layering that organ in there, the sounds, the way that they're piling on each other, it feels like like we are looking through this prism, that there's like this picture is finally being brought to life with the music. I understand everything is making sense. <laughs> incorporating the piano back in and you know holding our hand and taking us back down such a beautiful segue A cry from the soul so beautiful and I'm having one of those epiphany moments where everything starts making sense right because the, the album art started making sense and then the title of this song the great gig in the sky yes this was this was a pain soulful sound this was a beautiful beautiful voice that was reaching to the heavens a plea to God it felt like like we were at church it felt like like knees were falling to the ground, the hands were being thrown in the air and tears are streaming. You could feel every fiber of, of the vocalist being just building to the sound and being thrown into the music. Even just listening to it, I feel like at the end of it, I'm left with nothing. Like it took everything out of my heart, everything out of my soul and squeezed me dry. Amazing. Our next stop is number six, money. And our vocal is Gilmore. I think it's really unique and on brand for them to start off this song like this. Like we have a money cycle, right? Like a water cycle, but with money, we have the like this sequency motion where it's like wash, rinse, repeat, but with money and how money travels. And then I had a flashback to the opening song of this album. And then I kind of had a little thought throughout all the songs that we've heard so far up until this point. And it almost feels like all of the elements that are to be introduced in all these songs, and now with the money, with the, the coin sounds and the, the cash register and the movement sounds of the money, were we introduced to all of these sounds in the very first song? And was that like a tone setter? Was it like, like at the beginning of the show, kind of giving us a hint as to what's to come, literally, like they're showing us all the elements that we will eventually visit? Right? I mean, with the introduction of the saxophone, I was blown away and I wanted to say something about the, the sprinkling of the electric piano because that was doing so much and then little did I know that the the heavy weight was about to drop in. Yeah, this sax and the way it's being played, this is true musicianship right here. I All these switch ups and turnovers, oh my gosh, it's giving us so much to to ride along with this is such a roller coaster from the the vocal to to that sax moment and then we had our first you know this this percussive um bomb and then now we're we're switching gears yet again this time a little bit more slightly it's not as big of a pivot but this is yeah this is a total roller coaster <laughs> 
it maintains this sense of jazz throughout. And that's what's true of every section and that's what connects one section to the next. That's what's keeping that steady heartbeat alive or else it would be every section too different from the next to feel cohesive and it will be more like a Bohemian Rhapsody moment where it's a lot of different collages just thrown together and this one beautiful masterpiece but this isn't exactly that this is a little bit more flowing steadily but it's more so expanding and going in the same direction as opposed to just um a chaos and turn at every point <laughs> I didn't think we were gonna get vocals again in this song, but here they are. Okay, have you ever felt this way? Have you ever heard a song that you liked so much that you wanted to become a movie writer slash director just so that you can use that song in a movie? Like you can, you can see the scenario, you can see how you want you want it to play out. Like some movies do this so great. I believe Quentin Tarantino does an amazing job in his movies with this element where he adds in a song and it just is an explosive moment. This is one of those songs. This is, that's why I even thought about this. Money is one of the songs where it would be so good in a movie. And that made me think, why haven't I ever heard this song before? And I realized this song actually is a bit familiar to me, perhaps because it probably was in a movie. I can't believe that it hasn't been in a movie I've, I've seen before in my life. There, it has to be, right? Do any of you know if money is in any movie? I just really respect the way that they incorporated all these elements, incorporated all those pivots. It's such a big minor moment, so much minor happening. And then we have a lot of rock, a lot of edginess, then we have a lot of smoothness and a lot of jazz and the way that that's blended together so easily and comfortably, no awkwardness, no hiccups whatsoever. Just the way all these different elements across the board blend together in money. I love it. Arriving at number seven, we've got us and them, and our vocal is Gilmore. So I've noticed this as a theme for Pink Floyd, or at least in Dark Side of the Moon, that they have this trailing off that starts off each song, ending the one before. The way the notes just ring out and suspend in air and then mix with the next note that gets added on and the way it just lingers, <sighs> it's overwhelming. They can give us this beautiful, this beautiful instrumentation, this beautiful musicality in the melody and in the the way that the pitches are flowing so beautifully, but then they give us a chord that really challenges us, that challenges our ear and the direction where we believe the sound should go and switches it up on us and allows us to believe that there's a disruption, that there's this, this grand moment just broken apart with a magical twisted chord. <laughs>
song that went on for quite a while, it feels like it had such an abrupt ending. Because I guess they do this thing where like songs share each other because they kind of end into the next song so that everything bleeds into one another, which is actually really smart. Can't get mad at them for that. Just so much to unpack there. I feel like we had this kaleidoscope of sounds and elements and arrangements. I mean, right away, right at the beginning, I feel like we had a full experience with the way that the piano kind of paired itself with that sax and the way that the saxophone took a journey of its own and the piano was kind of like its, like its second hand, its sidekick support, and then the percussions and the drums kind of set this comfort, this like cushion underneath everything just as like this support. And then when the voice came in, so beautiful, such a really, really interesting circular effect with the the repetition and the echoing, like a like very prominent reverb where you can just hear the sound over and over again. It created yet yeah, like a circular, very loop uh, like effect, which feels like it's kind of a theme. And then the way the piano kind of seeped in with the vocal there and it kind of directed where we went melodically. Um, it felt like the piano dictated what happened next in the voice. Like we had that, um, we had that seventh chord that was very, very edgy and kind of gave us a spice and kind of changed directions just a little bit. It didn't give us that full revolution, but it gave us like a slight nudge in a different direction. And we had a lot of sus chords and we had a lot of open chords that allowed this sound to be really ringing. Bursting onto the scene, we've got Any Color You Like at number eight. And our vocal is instrumental for the last time in this album. But then again, we don't have a lot of album left, so. We have this great electronic presence and it's very, it has this very cool undertone with all the, the chord changes and the way all of the pitches kind of collide with one another. It's very electronic, very synthesizer. It's it's like you can feel the reverberation or the um, the waves kind of disrupting one another and they collide, they create this new sound and they layer one on top of another. A lot of strength and comfortability down in the percussion. I love the buildups and I love when they finally get in a groove, they get in a zone, like they, they stay at a peak, they hold onto it and they ride it in. I feel like, like I could hear them discovering different ways to play these instruments, different ways to play the electric guitar, different ways to move the music. Like they discovered they can make the music sound this way with this song, with this album. Dropping in at number nine, we've got Brain Damage and our lead vocal is Waters. <laughs> We have this very playful theme that's playing out where we have a, a major to seventh switch up there, which is creating this very like unsettling, eerie vibe, but it's also major so it's like kind of coated with this kind of misplaced cheerfulness That was such a perfectly paced escalation. I love the way we had that crescendo into a growth, into a growth of sound too. And we had the addition of the background vocal. What's allowing it to really sound like it's this big moment is the contrast to the vocal. The vocal is so subdued and subtle and easy that it makes everything else around it sound big. Is in my head. The 
Using my hands to play To make the chain So I believe the guilty parties and making that escalation, this vortex that kind of just sucks us in and it makes it so exciting, more than just the escalation in the dynamics, right? How it gets louder and we have the crescendo, but it feels like like we have some some really juicy chords in there that open up the sound, like we have like like a sus chord in there, and then we have that the placement of the the, the guitars up against the organ, and that sound just feels like like something like red, red alert. <laughs> We made it to the last song of the night, Eclipse, and our vocal is Waters. Long live this organ. The way this is so perfectly major and so beautifully sequenced with this repetition that doesn't come off monotonous but it comes off as like this homecoming feeling this like hero's journey made it to the back end of the cycle made it back home the end of this this lunar cycle right we've made it from the dark side of the moon to the eclipse and it's just this this total victory <laughs> I don't know how to feel right now. I I feel everything. The, the arrangement of everything, whoever decided on the order of this was just so genius. And I was finally able to understand the spoken word at the end. Um, I believe he said there is no dark side of the moon. As a matter of fact, it is all dark side, right? He said something along those lines. And then Correct me if I'm wrong, then for a second there, it felt like there was only heartbeat, right? That's what was keeping the song alive. And then when the heartbeat stops, the album's over, just like a person, crazy, emotional, <laughs> whatever. But then um, I felt like there was a really high pitched sound. Did you hear that too? Is that part of it or am I just going deaf? Am I just like slowly going deaf? Also, I've been having trouble hearing out of my left ear since about song three. So I'm gonna have to deal with that. So in one of my last videos, I let you guys know what playlist I'm listening to right now. And that's more so for when I go do exercise, when I go on a run, when I go on a drive, I put on my playlist things that I know I'm going to listen to. And right now I'm listening to Rubber Soul, the album. That's my playlist, just the whole album. So tell me what you're listening to, whether it is an album or you've made your own playlist. Who knows? Maybe the next time we sit and talk, I'll tell you that my current playlist is just listening to the Dark Side of the Moon album. And stay tuned. Should be really excited for what comes next because you never know what it's going to be or when it's going to be. And the thing about that is I don't either. So we're on this journey together. <laughs> Remember to take care of yourself, stay safe, and take it easy.